Um, hi everybody, uh, my name is Vicky Baker and I'm the Clinical Director for Learning Disability and Neurodevelopmental Services in Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, welcome to Learning Disability Awareness Week uh, 2023. So I've worked in learning disabilities since I was 16, when I did some work experience in a special school and have never looked back really. I've always worked in learning disability services with children and with adults and working alongside family carers has been fundamental to me in all of that. So my job now is as a clinical director and I work across Sussex and I work uh, we have six community learning disability teams, which I'll describe later. We've also got an inpatient service in Worthing for people with a learning disability who have mental health and behaviour support needs. Um, and we also have a domiciliary care service in East Sussex. So I'm responsible for those teams um, and I lead the professional groups. Um, and the professional groups are multidisciplinary teams and they include occupational therapy, physiotherapy, learning disability nurses, speech and language therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, and behaviour support practitioners. And I'm a speech and language therapist by background. So we have three community teams in West Sussex, um, and we work with anybody that's got a specialist health need and a learning disability that can't be met by ordinary or mainstream services. So all of our uh, professionals specialise in learning disability, and you can refer in for any reason that relates to people's health, really. So um, I gave some examples of things that got referred into the team last week. Somebody was referred from discharging from hospital, had eating and drinking issues and needed a speech and language therapist. Someone else's behaviour had really deteriorated. They'd started smashing up their bedroom and throwing chairs. Um, somebody else may have um, some sort of depression. Um, somebody else may need support to access hospitals for a particular reason. Um, and then last week, also, somebody, a family rang us because they were really distressed. They didn't know what was wrong with the person. They felt that something was in their, in their gut felt not right. And could we work with them to understand what the issues might be? So um, we have a referral route. So you can make a self-referral. That's absolutely fine. The only people that need to go through a GP is if there is an eating and drinking issue that the person needs a speech and language therapist to do an assessment, or if there are mental health issues and you need to see a psychiatrist, then you need to go through your GP. But we would very much encourage self-referrals and we have um, a one-stop referral system in West Sussex and we can put the details on the website later um, and we can email you a referral form, we can send a paper copy and um, we want to be as accessible to family carers as possible, you can ring us up um, and we can send you a form. Um, and then when you've completed that form, and again, we want as much information as possible. Obviously, we need to know that the person has a learning disability um, and then describe what the issue is that you're facing and what you feel you want help with. Um, and then that referral goes to one of our teams, the one that's local to your area. So we've got one in Western, one in Northern and one in Coastal. And we'll look at that and we'll triage it in terms of its urgency. We try really hard to see people within four weeks. That's our standard to try and see people and do an initial assessment. Obviously, if something's much more urgent, we'll try and see people sooner. And then after that four weeks or within that four weeks, we do something called a core assessment or an initial assessment. And we really look at a real breadth of the person's health. We look at their mental health, their physical health. We look at their posture, their mobility. We look at their respiratory issues, eating and drinking, communication, behavior, um, sleep. It's a really, really rounded first look at that person, because what we know with somebody with a learning disability is there is never one thing. It's really complex. What's happened in their life that's changed at the moment? What, what's prompted the reason for referral now? What do we know about that person already? So it's a really good first initial oversight and a look. And we would always, always involve family carers in that. They know their loved one better than anybody else. They will know what might be going on for that person. Or if they don't, they want to know you know they'll want to know why and see which of the professions might help so we do that initial assessment it goes back to the team for a discussion and then we allocate somebody to be a lead practitioner to then work alongside that person and their family and we're really really person-centered um, and it's important that that's not seen just as a cliche everybody's health is different everybody's social situation is different everyone's support network is different um, so we try and really tailor our assessment and intervention to that person particular issue at that time 
um, and allocate the professions accordingly. And I have to say, that just so families know, there are waiting lists for some professions um, and they are sadly getting longer because of the demand for our service. We will get to you in the end. We will want to see you. These are these are practitioners who specialise and want to work in learning disability and want to work alongside families to support their loved ones. So, um, yeah, but I don't want people to think we're, we haven't got waiting lists because we have at the moment. You can refer in for any reason around specialist health and we will try and signpost if we are unable to provide that service. We get around 50% of our referrals for behaviour support issues or people with challenging needs. And I know your positive behaviour uh, support network are going to do something around behaviour support, but we have positive behaviour support practitioners, psychologists, learning disability nurses, speech and language therapists, OTs, and any one of those can work with families to understand why somebody might be behaving in the way they are, because it may be around communication, it may be about grief and loss, it could be so many reasons, and we'd want to work with families to get good developmental history, to look at that person's environment at the time, what's causing them to be distressed at that particular point in time. But I'll let the network talk about that. The other 50% of our referrals tends to be around people with complex physical health needs. So our speech and language therapists will work with people with eating and drinking issues, as well as working around communication. And obviously we have specialist physios and OTs that think about people's sensory needs, think about their respiratory needs, think about their posture, their mobility. Um, so and, and often pain management also comes into that now. So we would work, for example, with the families to maybe put on paper with the family about how does that person express pain? What do, what do other people that are supporting them need to know to understand um, when they may be deteriorating? And I know Adele Parsons has been talking one of these things around um, stop, look, care and restore too many about what are the soft signs that you might see in terms of somebody. And families are key in that. And we have to listen very hard and pay attention to what families are telling us about the person that they love and then bring in that expertise from a specialist physio or a specialist nurse um, to really understand it from a particular profession. So it's a shared expertise. There's the shared expertise of the family carer about their loved one and our expertise as professionals. And together we all come up with a joint care plan and a risk assessment that really understands that person's health and what we need to do next. The biggest myth is for carers out there that are have young people um, is that it doesn't all end at 18 and there's no health service. There's this real myth about there and I've, I've heard a lot of family carers say when you hit 18 there's nothing. From a health point of view we have three community teams in Sussex. We work with adults with a learning disability with those professions I mentioned earlier. So psychiatry, psychology, behaviour support, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, speech and language therapy um, and learning disability nurses. We specialise in learning disability. We're there to support people with specialist health needs. We are still there for you. You don't fall off a cliff in terms of health. Um, we're small teams, but we're passionate teams and we really want to work alongside you and on behalf of your loved ones. Please don't worry about picking up the phone and speaking to one of our members of the, of the team. We, you know, we, we want to be open to family carers. We want to hear what people's experiences are. If we aren't the right team for you, then we can signpost you somewhere else. Um, if we think that we're unable to meet your needs, we'll say, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And what we don't want is to people feel alone with their loved one's health. Um, we want you to pick up the phone. We want you to call us. We want to work alongside you.